Yes, people, Killer Keller here. This is Street Culture Podcast from Arts Arcade Piccadilly for Keller Vision. Today we have a very special guest hailing from the rich, fertile grounds of street culture, moving into music and television and the movies from The Curse to Corrupt FM to People Just Do Nothing, the beats, the producer, the Hugo Chegwin is inside the place. <laughs> You go check with inside the place. Yes, thanks How for having me. Brother? Yeah, good man. You? Yeah, good. It's good to finally have us back in the hot seat and uh, chatting with you, man. Yes. Yeah. I think last time was a bit more chaotic, from what I remember. Yeah, I um sometimes when I like, oh, I'm going straight in. That's straight so, in. When I'm a character, I find it easy because mm-hmm. it's not me. Mm-hmm. So like, it's like a mask. But when it's me, I feel I go a bit introverted and like a bit like withdrawn. Yeah. Like especially around big crowds. Yeah. yeah. Everyone needs just, your Sasha Fierce needs to be... Yes, yeah, I need to, yeah, Sasha Fierce, yeah, (laughs) exactly. My Beyonce needs to come out. Curiously, do you you see people's Sasha Fierce's come out? Like, can you see this kind of, you know, being in in the environments that you are? You know, it's not just music here, we're talking, you know, a global traveller of of acting and and dramatisation and comedy. Like, you must see some Sasha Fierce's come out the bag. Uh, Yes, but I don't, I think people do it like naturally like it's not forced Mm -hmm. whereas for me um as myself if i'm like right i've got to get sasha fiercy like it's a bit forced i'm I'm more like it might take me a while to feel comfortable and then i will relax and then yeah 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 Yeah, yeah. falling out falling in yeah but some some people are like you know that that's a great skill to have i think like to be able to just switch on your charm like charm is so powerful anyway it is, isn't it yeah to switch it on and yeah. like you know win people over like naturally yeah. yeah it's funny isn't it because with with that kind of charm and i know what you mean it's people that can talk almost like bilingual in their own language it's almost like that they can fall into regionality they can fall into like a sympathetic russian accent you know yeah, yeah. in english <laughs> like, how does that work i know like I know a very successful music producer and his, uh, like, he's a talented producer, but his true talent is charm. Mm. Like, I've seen him sell, like, a metronome. <laughs> like, and people are so excited over it. Mm. And, like, you know, everyone's coming to hear it. Like, and he, he's he's just really good at <laughs> s- selling a vision. <laughs> yeah. Selling a vision? Yeah, that's what you're buying, I guess, that's what you're gaining from him, is he's giving you a part of uh, his vision for you, mm. and people love it. And he, but you know he's there's a process behind it. Mm. Like I've seen it. Mm. Prepares the room, gets the snacks, make sure really? you know like if you smoke or drink, he's got it all. Wow. Yeah. I know we know gentlemen that do that with ladies, but not so much on the sales pitch of uh, of anything that comes in, into contact with music. Yeah, yeah, music and like TV people as well. I find that like the the best or the most successful are charmers. Really? Yeah. I guess that's something you learn as you go, right? Like, to be in those environments and excelling in what you do creatively, I mean, this is part of a skill set. This is, this is the toolbox stuff that people, yeah. you know, elevate in their profession with, right? Yeah, and I think that's a, such a powerful one yeah. from just observing. Yeah. I'm like, I wish I was good at that because, yeah. well, like, for like this guy... He's exceptionally talented, mm. so he, you know, he is entitled to have four people to want his music. Mm. However, like me and my friend, like we would literally go in for weeks, but the sales pitch was shit, mm. so we wouldn't land it like him. Yeah, this is where this is where management comes into play, right? Like, you know, often, Somet- sometimes, I, my experience with managers, there's like maybe two types. Yeah, tell, tell me about the two types of managers. One is like a visionary yeah. who has a vision for you and mm-hmm. will help you get in the rooms or meet the right people. Mm-hmm. And then the others are people that you that you as an artist delegate. Mm. Oh, interesting, yeah. But I don't know, like, I'm not... No, no, know. no, you're right. I, but that's I what I've there is that. There, seen. Yeah, yeah, because we've all had one of the two... In some form or another, I'm sure. Yeah, I think when you're starting out in whatever it is you do, mm. it's good to have a guy with a, vi- a shared vision. Yeah. And then I think as you maybe get older and 
then it's about finding the, the other. But presents you opportunities still, understands you. Yeah. Division one, division one is key. But I, th- but I also think the delegative side, from imag- I mean, if you've got both, which you can do, you can yeah, have yeah. both. That's the gold, right? That's, yeah. But they have to be aligned with you. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I have managers. They're great. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have managers? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'm just trying to think where they fit. <laughs> I mean, because I'm... The, the, it's me who is the, uh, like, f- uh, figuring it out. Yeah. A new sound that I'll yeah, never yeah, yeah. find and probably won't ever put anything out. Yeah, that, that creating the, 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 the wheel. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they're just like, okay, <laughs> just facilitating me. Like, they'll make suggestions and I'll be like, no, no. You don't understand. Yeah, you don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I want Kanye. You know what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, we'll get into, like, some of your accolades and people you've worked with later. Um, I, I feel like your career, you've had so many mini parts. I would imagine it's quite hard for a manager to kind of di- diagnose like where you, well, I, yeah. because you're Even you're me. so you know you're so skill your skill sets are so vast, um, you know from music to yeah I don't know if there's skill sets. Um, Explain what you think. Winging it, I'm winging it, hard. winging it. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely just taking the leap and being like yeah yeah it's fine, and just in the deep end like. Yeah. Fuck, we're getting mic'd up here. Like, <laughs> it's happening. I don't know my lines. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna wing this. And what about from a music point? Because this is where it all began, really, isn't it? Yeah, mm, yeah. Music's maybe still wing. It's still imposter syndrome. Me winging it, like. But I guess same with acting. Like you got a few aces up your sleeve. Mm that you know people will like. Mm-hmm. But, like, once you're out of them, you're like, fuck, mm-hmm. what do I do now? Yeah, 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 anxiety kicks in. Yeah, shit, they're going to know that I'm actually not good at this. And that, like, Sipa, Asim and Steve are really talented and I'm just their mate. <laughs> Basically. I think we all, be, we all go through that. I think, I think we all go through that at some point or another. It's, uh, it's that recovery time that's key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, where did it all begin for you, my brother? Where did it all... Where were, did your paths start out and how? Um, like, I, you know, like garage grime in school, mm. like being, a, I guess, like getting decks and stuff early when I was quite young, mm. maybe like 14, making tapes. Just like being obsessed with pirate radio, I think, was a big, obviously like without knowing became a massive huge yeah part of my musical and like yeah my dna um yeah and then you know like people had fruity loops and stuff mm. getting copies of that like my boy showing me like a few tricks like about sampling and stuff <laughs> like that and then yeah just like helping my mates I don't even say helping, just being around people making mixtapes and mm-hmm. stuff, like recording their vocals over like dip set beats mm-hmm. or, you know, gang star instrumentals. Yeah. And just learning like about song structures and yeah, I, I would say that was the sort of beginning. Mm. I, I'm not really a graffiti guy, but like growing up in West London, it was all around me. It was mm. a big part, I guess. I wouldn't say gangs. It wasn't like gangs, but I feel it might have, it was tribal. Mm. So like SB was everywhere when I was a kid. Touch. Uh, A guy called Mm Does. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Yeah, he was like all down my street. MZ. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe some. And then I was friends with a guy called Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From GR. Wicked GR, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it was like, I thought it was like part of this like, underground like british mm. subculture like grime garage jungle and it was and the graffiti. graffiti reflected that didn't it yeah yeah but sb were like quite goons man mm. like they would you know if they got on the train on the way home like you had to know if we were like one of them or something yeah, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and that still exists now it's still there yeah I mean, um maybe. my friend shows was part of right uh sb really i yeah. see so you were all right well, I mean, I wouldn't say I was all right, but like, yeah, 
had a few like you know you growing up in a I guess an area you get to you get to know how to like swerve yeah certain tricky situations a little yeah, bit see the shadows coming towards yeah you yeah yeah think, okay this is me going left <laughs> yeah i'm getting off at q bridge <laughs> yeah, why yeah. just feel like it just the gardens and yeah yeah just, just give you on, all right get me straight into that into the woodland and i'm out yeah kind of exactly thing. yeah so your west london is in like the southwestern ways of like brentford where brentford. the tv is yeah, yeah, yeah show nice. is yeah that's that's where i was from nice yeah yeah reasonably leafy yeah give or take yeah Give or take, yeah, it's um, it's a weird one. It like, is, because... espe especially at that time. Explain. Could you tell me about that? Well, I feel like it was like, you know, no sm smartphone era. So, like, the world was a smaller place. Mm. So people, like, wouldn't leave the area. Mm. But we're, like, I guess part of London, but leaving it was, like, you know, I wouldn't say a lot of people like my age from that area would necessarily leave West London regularly. Mm. But my dad worked in Soho. So I would have to at weekends like go there with him. And then, and a few guys as well, like deep fashion guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would come here with them to buy Iceberg and <laughs> go to Probito's and Bond Street. Yeah, yeah, and yeah then got you. Learn about you know all the trainer shops, like mm. major flavors, Foot Patrol. Come on, crooked tongues, that. all that. Yeah, all the <laughs> famous six spots. Yeah, but like as a kid, I didn't really like. I just thought, okay, that's how it is. Yeah. So Soho, you went in for the you know, you you were there for the media side of things. You'd be introduced to. No, no, my dad like is a radio plugger. Okay. Yeah. So, but he had an office, so you know, like I would just. I didn't want to sit on his like leather sofa and listen to him on the phone. No, no. So I would just wander around. It was a bit like, uh, a bit weird. Not weird, like, a bit edgy. Yeah. Back then. Soho has always been edgy. I don't know, maybe it's just an age range, but I don't feel it half as edgy as it was. No, I don't think so. Now yeah. it's like tourist shops yeah, and yeah. like sex. I mean, there's always been sex shops, yeah. but yeah, like, it's, it doesn't seems. Doesn't have the same vibe, does it? Yeah, there's like a Lyle and Scott shop there. and... And the Gales. <laughs> Gales, yeah, that wasn't there before. No. No, it was like... Yeah. Yeah, it was character building. Mm. Yeah, I bet it was. So, of an age, what, early teens? Yeah. Wandering around? Yeah. Discovering these places? Yeah. In some... How did you get away with that so young? Just because he was on the phone all the time? No, he would just be like... I was just like... He would know that I would go to, like, Foot Patrol or Major Flavours. He knew where they were. Right. So he would be like, OK, come back in, like, half an hour. Okay. So I'd have to come back. I had no money. No. But I'd just still go. <laughs> and uh yeah. It was informative years of like learning street yeah, fashion. Yeah, exactly. And and now I, I now I'm thirty nine. I don't know if I'm probably dressing like a weirdo now to kids. <laughs> you're all right, you're all right. For those that aren't watching and are listening, he's doing all right. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Kids are all right here. Yeah. Um but it is funny how we uh say we royal we, um We'd identify very quickly on what our likes and dislikes are at a young age, but it's that intrigue to want to go and discover stuff that actually is, is it, it, to, to a lot of people, I don't know, street culture as a whole, it's either you like it or you don't, but you've got to get to know it. You can't, it's not, it's not just a bypassing thing. You've got to, it's like, it's like being into reggae. You can't just be into a reggae song. You've got to kind of almost live reggae you've got yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> you know what you've mean? got to immerse yourself in it yeah but I sometimes think when you're young like you're not really aware like I wasn't I wasn't like okay I like you know grime and garage jungle music I now need to find like TN trainers like it was all like gr a gradual process mm -hmm. I guess but they're just you know like you'll see like the older guys in school with like 95s or Air Force Ones. Always, or, yeah. And be like, oh, what are they? I mm. need them. Like, they were like, oh, there was a, a graffiti artist in my area called Smack. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and I think he was SB. I don't know properly, but he would have TNs on. Right, and okay. I was like, whoa, what yeah, are yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't want to ask him. No, no. Because it, it might go wrong. It could go really wrong. Yeah. You could yeah. walk away without your shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I didn't want that. So it's like, just clock it observing. Yeah, yeah. 
I think that's what a lot of people, particularly people that are into the culture at an early age, were very quick to observe stuff. I mean, MTV era, Channel U, mm. you know, these were, you know, you know, media defining moments. Yeah, yeah, but Channel U was massive. Massive. It's Kalashnikov. Like, yeah. That's, a lot of people have like Channel U references, but for me it was like Kalashnikov, Kalashnikov. skinny man. Amazing like, UK hip hop. Yeah, yeah, that made me like, I guess when grime and garage was like sort of not cool anymore. Mm. I was into like Timberland and Pharrell, mm. but then I heard Kalashnikov and Skinny Man. And I was like, what's this? Mm -mm. Game changing. Yeah, yeah, this is me. Yeah. Even though it's definitely not. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. This is who I am. What struck you with that kind of rap, that kind of hip hop? I just thought it was like really like relatable, N not necessarily to myself, but like to a lot of people I can imagine, like I can see it. Mm. I, I can like visualize everything he's saying. Like I sort of understand his references. Mm. And also the beats were so good. I think it's like Harry Love. Yeah, big up Harry Love, yeah. that's right. And Louis Parker, Louis, Louis Parker, Parker yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because he was a beatsmith as well. He was time. sick, man. He was on some like Cloud Nine kind of stepping Pete rock shit. Yeah, like uh, that's when I was like, you know, like wow, yeah, like there's some really good English rap producers. Before I just thought like I didn't really think that they're or I wasn't aware. And mm -hmm. then from those guys, I was like, fuck, man, Harry loves like, like like primo yeah 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 he is serious cat yeah still is a serious cat Big yeah yeah um Gee. we we become studies don't we in the culture that's the funny thing like you don't realize how much you're absorbing yeah things like that just the name credits on the back of a record they they didn't exist by the time you know we were we were on the outro of that yeah the tail end mm -hmm. you may find a you know six or seven pounds per you know plate 12 inch but not a lot of them had the credits. Like when you'd see like Channel U or something like that, it'd tell you who was behind yeah. what. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It would say like Klashnikov, like yeah. Harry Love, for example. Yeah. Like another OG sick producer, like Beat Butcher. Beat Butcher. <gasps> yeah, he's he's still yeah. the guy, man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Very sick. Yeah. He's like one of my favourite producers. Batman. Yeah. Batman. Just the boom bap era, that real... Yeah, but even he like he like was amazing in that like terra firma mm. era, but like even now he's doing stuff with you know like just like big like party next door and mm -hmm. like big American acts and like Killer Mike. Yeah, mm. he's just sick. Like man, yeah, and um, Farmer. From yeah, Tales yeah, Force. he's sick Again. too. Yeah, going clear with some really crazy looped, you know. Crunchy boom bappy bit. Well, not even boom bappy. It's like gutter rap kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like the that they like, especially like beat beat which is just a G. Like he's mm. he's like. Sometimes you work with people uh, that, well, me and I'll, I'm like these. This is this person has a serious God given talent. There's mm -hmm. a few people I've worked with like that. He's definitely one of them. Yeah. Yeah, he's sick. Saying. I love yeah. it. Um, let's talk about the people you worked with, within music at least. Like, you know, tell tell us tell us uh, who you've been collaborating with more recently or before. You know, um, time gone by. Yeah, yeah. I have like time's gone by. Time's gone. Like I did. I feel like I got pop music PTSD, man. Like <laughs> I, I made like I used to make beats for my mate Roly, who's right. a rapper, son of a queen. He's like a West London legend. <clears throat> that like put out like two mixtapes that probably no one's ever heard, but he's amazing. And from, I mean, this is a boring story. I'll tell you, I used to teach a guy how to make beats. Okay. He gave me 20 pounds and I'll teach him for as long as he wants how to use logic. And then one day I gave him a beat tape. I was like, look, just so you like, he never asked me like what I make. No, and really? I was like, I was like, here, <laughs> just so you know, like he wants to make techno. And I was like, this is what I make. I can help you yeah. probably better make this sort of stuff. And then he listened to it and gave it to his friend that worked at Virgin Records. Really? And then he was like, okay, I want you to try and do uh, this gigs. No, it wasn't even gigs at the time. It was like this naughty boy 
Never Be Your Woman remix. Right. And then my friend Harry Craze, who's like, you know, he's just like an underground dubstep legend, but no one knows who he is, but mm -hmm. he's a G. I lived with him. He's like my best mate. He helped me and we did it together. Wow. And then from then we were kind of on and then we had a studio session with Naughty Boy and Emily Sande was there and I had a beat for Roly, my mate, who's a rapper. Yeah, yeah. And that became, that was the heaven instrumental. Wow. It was like an Emily song. Yeah. Heaven. Yeah, and then we made Next To Me and then we are in the pop world. Like That's crazy. Deep in. That was like propelled. That sounds like really quick. It was quite quick, yeah. And then... At the time, I thought, you know what? Like, I feel I can contribute something to this world. But then the more you just in it, like, you just sort of get battered by it. Mm. And then, like... Brutal. Yeah, it just became, like, a cuts game. Like, I, I just didn't enjoy it. It felt like uh, a job. Yeah. And then I was like... And fortunately, I had people just do nothing. Yeah. And my friend Harry is exceptionally talented. Like, I knew he would be good, like... And he is. Mm -hmm. He's working with, like, you know, I'm not even sure I'm allowed to say, but one of the best British, like, sick people. So he's fine. Really? Yeah. But, yeah, so I had people just, so I just started just, you know, making beats for, so for you me. Were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You Again. weren't just doing nothing at that time. So what, how, yeah. how, did, how did that transition happen? Because, like you say, there, there was this, you know, stabilizers off of the music then a, then a you know jump ship to to this new this whole new yeah juggernaut <laughs> it sort of happened at the same time though so like um like heaven happened then we got series one and then next to me came out and then series one was out mm. and then we were doing live shows so i was always juggling them both that's crazy yeah but like steve and sepa like you know took i guess took on a bulk of like I guess it was like sort of managing it all and mm -hmm. writing it all. And then me and Asim were feeding into that. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, I was probably feeding in the least, actually. Mm -hmm. Probably when it was at its best. And then, um, <laughs> and then yeah, it just got like, I just, I, I, look, I was like, okay, I think I'll be able to survive mm. on just people just do nothing mm. for a bit. And then I'll come back to this. There was a moment, and I'm sure you've heard this a million times from artists like myself and others of a time that discovered people just do nothing on YouTube. It wasn't even called that. I can't remember what it was called at the time. It was called something else. It was like early. early yeah. Early. Uh, I, I, can't, I think it might have been people just do nothing, but we might have just put PJDN or something. something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, vague. Vague yeah. as fuck, yeah. It was just... It was so, so relatable. Just... It was almost like a mirror on. It was like like spinal tap don't come. It, it's it was more, it was more hurtful than that. As like artists, we were just could not believe that someone was absolutely on the money, and it made you actually question. Me, you're like, well, these these guys must be musicians. These guys must be like because it was so cutting and so right. And we were just you know, had some fits for years, like, ages and ages. We would just watch it over and over again, studying like, yeah, how did they get that so absolutely right? Because we've been there. <laughs> Me and Sepa have been to like, you know, open mics with like, you know, not one girl in the room, like twenty guys, no one listening to mm. all freestyling, like <laughs> all talking about dropping their mixtape, their album that no one gives a shit about. Like, we've been those guys. Mm -hmm. Like, we've been on Pirate Radio. No one's calling the line. <laughs> Probably not even transmitting. Like, mm. yeah, we've been those guys. So I think that's why. And observed it all, you know. Yeah. Like, been around it. Because we, until, you know, like, Series 3, we, like, sort of, at times, are those guys, mm. too. Like, failing musicians. That's interesting. There must respect. have been... Yeah, and, and I'm just... You got me thinking. Actually, it's almost like the the horse suddenly went in front of the cart, and you know, there's there's comparables of its time. Did I say the monkeys? You know, when back in the day, and then yeah, like Spinal Tap and Bad News, and these kind of more kind Spinal of Spinal Tap, sick, man. sick, yeah. awesome, awesome. Um, you know, and there was other pop contemporaries, but you guys just managed to to nail it, and then excel, almost celebrated. That you started from the bottom, now you're there. Yeah. Yeah, I think as well, like, because with time, I feel like we 
earn our stripes doing live sets. Mm. Like we played to crowds of ten people in Ipswich. That's all true. Like as Corrupt FM. Like it, you know, we done. We earn our stripes, mm -hmm. and we learn uh, how to, you know, like do a live show, how to shut a rave down. Like and that took a while. Mm -hmm. And our care for the culture, like we're not trying to like. The joke isn't on garage music or grime MCs or artists trying. Mm -hmm. The joke is on these idiots that are like, you know, one is MC Grinder is the biggest narcissist you'll ever meet, and Beats is the biggest activator for it for him too. Like mm -hmm. they're idiots. That's mm. the joke. Like okay, so let's get into the the characters of that then, because yeah, you're you're absolutely right, and that's that's cl clearly a well thought through parody of something you've seen or people that you've you've had to associate associate yourself with at some point or another like i mean i'm not obviously telling you to point fingers and yeah yeah <laughs> throw, throw, but you know they these people do exist like yeah. how did you narrow that field down as writers well to be honest like grinder in the pilot gr not pilot the youtube stuff grinder and beats are very close to each other actually they're they're the joke is is that they're fighting to be alpha mm. And like not one of them is really breaking, but Grinder always kind of has the upper hand slightly. Mm -hmm. But then when we came to developing it, um, the producers of the show and BBC, I, I might have just been the producers, like John, this guy called John Petrie, who's a G, he mm -hmm. was like, they're too close. Like, so we have to change one of them. Mm. And like, so beats had to change which i didn't like really i didn't think it was funny at first so in series one i wasn't really into that but i then i think i mean this might be me being narcissistic mm -hmm. but then i found my own way of doing it that i did find funny and then i loved it okay so what was that what was that kind of it was more like okay moment. i've just got to be this guy who's the biggest enabler for this narcissistic nightmare but also pull him out of it without intending to mm -hmm. you know like grinder might say i was in like california and took out the bloods and crypts with a bowling ball <laughs> and i'll be like like what bowling alley like just the micro details that he to to, to sh expose the lie but like not intentionally it's just he's so he loves the story so Love much it. yeah yeah he's such an idiot <laughs> basically <laughs> so in one sense he's like the cheerleader yeah like massively cheerleader. yeah but then kind of you know kind of blunders his way into c cornering he's got all his <laughs> chips on grinder mm. every he's all in every chip but there's like people, I guess, outside of Corrupt FM, like Roche, mm. who's like, that's fucking mental. Mm. It, but even that, he won't like. Grinder is number one. Like he will sort. He's aware of it. Like it's sort of like you know the the voice, or like someone on his shoulder mm. that he ignores. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he knows deep down, maybe that Grinder is not gonna be the big. He's not gonna be Drake. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it he he might be. Mm. Mm. He thinks he is. Big in Japan. Now yes. that was a real landmark moment. It was fun. That must have been. I, I, I guess it a, a, it had two stories to it, really, didn't it? It had like the the final swan song. Yeah. But then, kind of, and also it had the the opportunity to amplify and further further extend your corrupt fm legacy live yeah i mean that's it was fun man japan is like amazing it's somewhere that like i never would have really thought of going to mm. or experiencing and i'm so glad that we got to do that and go out there and like just have like the best time mm. in Japan. Jet lag's a killer over there though. Yeah, it's horrible. Why is it so brutal going that way? I don't know, but I got like, <laughs> I got some Valiums, yeah. <laughs> and they were fine. Like I could sleep on them fine. But when I ran out, oh my God, I was, 
I felt like a SoundCloud rapper, like going through the emotions. <laughs> like, I couldn't sleep. I was like, yeah, it was hard. Slurring. Yeah, <laughs> slurring, all of that. Yeah. I also had that film in something else. Like, I was micro, I don't know why I did this. I was micro dosing mushrooms, yeah. And I feel like one of these things was too strong. I was standing outside filming and I was looking at this car and like the paintwork started wobbling. Oh, no. And like, this is a full day of filming. And I was like, fuck, I can't do this tomorrow. No, like, no, no. Like, <sighs> that must have just been a slow, slow day for you. It was all right, actually, because after that moment, I like knew, I was like, okay, if I like, it's a, it's a micro dose, so I'm going to be mm. all right. But like, if I start to think about it too much, mm. I might go down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. So I've just got to be on it, active chatting to people how did you get a microdosing in in japan was that no that... sorry that's filming something else uh, right, okay. yeah no japan oh my god can you imagine yeah <laughs> wow that I means intense in the first place yeah never mind the paranoia of like <laughs> it's such an intense place man but like it's so hard to describe to anyone have you been there yeah yeah i think the thing that is noted from my experience is that they are good at replicating like, I remember a friend of mine, because I was walking in there, I guess that everywhere looks like a Times Square, but there was this one particular area that I think is it, it Harajuku era. Yeah. Area. And and um, I see a bunch of, like, uh, biker gangs. And I'm like, God, they look like, I mean, never mind Hell's Angels over here. They, they look like real thugs. Mm. And my guy turned around to me and he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do everything to up to 13, up to 100. It's not. It's it's not like oh they're replicating the West. No, no, no. They are. They, they go hard. They go hard. Yeah, yeah. They they go in on subcultures there massively. Mm. Like if you're into something, you're all the way in. All the way in. Yeah. Like, like, like footwear culture there is massive, mm. and we have Air Maxes that are probably JD Sports, whatever. But like to them, they don't have them there. They'll stop you in the street. Like, mm. well, like how did you get those? Where did you get them from? Mm -hmm. Show me the website. Like, wow, really? Yeah, even like like reggae. The guys who like reggae, they're all the way in. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like dreads, everything. Really? Yeah. They really go. They go hard, man. That's hilarious. Well, I say hilarious. I mean, it's it, it kind of fuels the whole ecosystem of the culture, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. They're sort of... It, like, I, like, I went to Disney, like... I went to Disneyland there. And, like, I was the only person not... They dropped a Winnie the Pooh toy that day. And everyone was in Winnie the Pooh, apart from me. I felt weird, like, <laughs> I felt weird. Were you standing there with Winnie the Pooh, thinking, what's the big deal? I was with grown men and women, like, dressed literally as, like, piglet and yeah. shit. <laughs> Mad. But, yeah. See, that's where you don't want to be dropping, no, uh, you know, microdoses. Definitely not. No. Um, but that all being said, to, to have, like, the, the, the last swing at the bat in movie form over there and uh, to experience it that must have been something yeah last thing at the bat is a mad one as well because it's been such a journey for us all I think we went from like you know I guess young men mm. I guess coming of age young men coming of age yeah. to like you know like we're like adults now mm. like I've got a son like we've all got like families mm. and stuff like that like it's just you know the it, it's mad but that's been like the you know such a life-changing experience mm. for us all and very rare like you know we're very lucky mm. um like talent you know lots of people have talent but i think luck has a big thing to do with it being part of a subculture like without we didn't force it. We weren't like, okay, we need to make a show about a subculture. Like, we were fortunate that at the time when we started, we didn't know Garage was going to hit a resurgence. Mm -hmm. We become part of that, and it just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Like, and to, when you have a subculture behind you, it's a whole different thing. Like, even dropping other shows, like, done, you know, like The Curse, I did a show called Sneak, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but they're not, they don't have subcultures. Yeah, so it's you. like you're one of many shows just coming out. Yeah. But when people just do nothing comes out, like it's different. Mm. Like you feel the impact. Yeah. People want you to come on. Like we want you to come onto this thing and we want you to do that. Whereas with other shows, they'll have like a PR guy, you know, like 
we're trying to get you on the one show. Like, yeah. I don't want to go on the ones personally, but like yeah, you know yeah. all of that shit. But yeah, it's this different. Yeah, that that that, that what, uh, so like a a sense of formula, but one that you accidentally kind of walked into. Yeah, can you sense that? Do you get a, a wider sense of when something's going to hit? You mentioned Sneakerhead Dead, but mm. you know, there's a bunch of stuff you've done, like Curse. You've done, you also done uh, that podcast which you had Al- Alchemist on, which is incredible. Oh yeah, chatting shit. Ooh. Yeah, that was that was that was natural. Yeah, that was incredible. That wasn't like me and C- like Seeper is one like is my probably my closest friend, real life. Like mm. it is a, bind- a grinder and beats relationship. Yeah, it really. Sure. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> the banter is real. Yeah, but the balance is a bit different. Like, you know, I, I definitely believe he's extremely talented. Mm-hmm, um, very much so. Big up, Steve. But I might not jump into a fire if he did or if he told me to, um, <laughs> whereas Beats definitely would. Um, but that's natural. That's mm-hmm. just like, we didn't even really think about Like, we didn't think about it. But I, So that's a good example then. So with the podcast and that natural um, camaraderie yeah. and banter, rapport you guys have. Yeah. Same as with... Um, corrupt FM people just do nothing um, do you th- that's the kind of bottle we're talking about bottling that energy I think like with time I can only talk for myself but I think with time like you know there's certain trajectories that I think um, I'm not speaking for the guys I'm just saying in general like as an actor or yeah. as a comedy actor, mm-hmm. like you have this one show and then you go off and you do a show on your own and then you go and work with this big director and you go and do this and that and this. Mm-hmm. Like there's like a clear path that I think we all think you're meant to take. But like for me, I think that the magic is with us guys. Like that's where, that's the lightning in the bottle. Mm. Like and... I'm not saying we have, but, you know, people who have that, like, let's look at Wu-Tang. Mm. When you move outside of that, you kind of lose it. Mm. Like, it's not as good. Mm. Like, Raekwon working with, you know, Just Blaze, mm. even though Just Blaze, in s- some people might think, is a better producer than the RZA. Mm-mm. But Raekwon, Raekwon with the RZA is mm. way, like... Is it? It's got that feeling. And I think that mm. us guys collectively working together has that feeling mm. like and especially with people just do nothing mm, mm. like it, it's just i don't know it's just got the source mm, it has and the curse was really fun to do like but again it's not a subculture so you don't get that you know like a scene backing you you're mm. not part of a scene it's just like you know in my opinion a good thriller comedy about the 80s mm, mm, mm. sneak ahead i have no idea what that's about okay, okay. <laughs> no, it, no it was all right i'm it, non-partial so no, yeah, it whatever, was fun. You, whatever you got to say it was fun it was fun to do, it was fun to make like zoo i love big zoo he's my guy he's mm-hmm. super talented lucia is super funny mm-hmm. talented it was fun to make but it's like you know like when you have a channel or a production like you know, like the word sneakerhead is a me- an Americanism. Mm. Like, yeah, it's like, first of all, you're you're starting with a bad. Always on the back foot. You're with, on the back foot, yeah. especially with people that like love trainers and mm. stuff like immediately. And it's based over like a sports direct type shop. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit. Um, I probably shouldn't be saying I don't care. No, 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 no. And, and, and respectfully, man, I think. Uh, as a creative, you've got to be subjective to, you know, the, the realities of what, how you feel about something. It's funny that it's like, I guess um, a real crass version is, is, I suppose, tattoo fixers, where there's always a, mm. there's always a tattoo shop somewhere that's got a problem with anyone that's going to excel in anything. That, so the moment you say sneakerheads, it's almost like there's already this kind of expectation yeah. that you really can't. I would be the same. Like, what the fuck is this? Put it's it a, on. Like, yeah, I get you. Mm, I don't know. Like this is weird. This is like a sitcom. Mm. Like I thought it was about like trainer heads. Like no, but it makes sense. What they, they on? I mean, you know, it's got fans. I mean, it's just a thing. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like people love it. Yeah. Um, and do you think some of that actually that love transcends mostly because people people like to grow up with the you know the the people Shows. that they support. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like they see you grow into another character or even from an industry point of view, you, you, you're you exhilarating into new pastures. People like to celebrate that. 
don't they? Yeah, they do. But I also think that we are now like, like, co- I'm just gonna say my opinion. Comedy at the moment, like, where where is like the Ali G show? Mm. Where is it, like in between as this country? Like, mm. you know, like those things when you were a kid, you were excited for. Like, there's mm. a Ameri- there's a few like Dave. I love the show Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know any. I'm just speaking for myself. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no British show that I'm like, yes, yeah. this is sick. Like, everyone's talking about it. Borat, you know. Yeah. All of those, The Office, Peep Show. Yeah. It's not, I don't know what's going on, but it's... Like a n- Dennis Pennis that just jumps yeah. out and does something. That's that anarchist, like, yeah. shaking up. M- maybe it's because we're in a different culture now mm. where that it's like a 15... So, like, like, I mean, I find like you know, chunks and Philly funnier than I find like. I guess, a lot of British comedy shows. Mm. Maybe that's showing. I don't know what it says about me, but I find it really hard. Like to and, I don't know. I just I don't think that show exists right now. What. What does make you laugh? What's the more most recent thing that you could just you could say yes that that dummy in? Um, what was I, I was watching that the other day. Uh, the last the last thing that like had me in, I guess it was Dave Lil Dicky show. Okay. That like, I not on his scale, but I relate to some of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's really good. Like I I watched rewatched Atlanta. I love that yeah. show. Um, but I'll watch like old English like documentary like The Cruise. With yeah, Jane yeah. McDonald's. yeah, 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 really. <laughs> like, series one <laughs> where they're on a cruise ship. I find the best comedy in that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like, just the in- inside kind of gags that that. Yeah, like just weird. Like yeah. they don't have like smartphones or laptops or TVs, and there's these workers and like after their shift. They were just sat in their room, bunk beds on, and they're listening to Phil Collins in complete silence. <laughs> That's like... It's just it. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sick. Do you think it's an age, you know, that, that we're in, maybe not so much from a social point of view, but, you know, as we get... As we age in the careers that we have, we, you know, that endorphin hit doesn't come the same way. We want more. Maybe. Maybe that's me. But I also feel you've got to embrace the change as well. Yeah. Like... And it's sick to me that, like, I mean, like, they're, they're superstars, but, like, people like Chunks and Philly, mm. they don't need a channel. Mm. Like, they have all the power. They yeah. just put it on YouTube. Like, what a production company's going to... Like, a channel is probably going to offer them nothing to what yeah. they'll get for adverts and revenues for, like... Their own thing. Yeah, like, just doing their own thing. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. I rate that a lot. I just... Um, maybe my age, but like some long form stuff in that way, like comedy could yeah. be cool. I mean, I don't know how you do it. You mm. need a bit of yeah, yeah a bit of money, <laughs> yeah. A bit of bunts. Yeah, a bit of bunts. Yeah, about, yeah. But um, yeah, I I like this whole empowering. Like mm. you don't need. It's like music, you know. You yeah. don't like a label's a bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I yeah. guess the TV production channels, all that. They're Same like thing. a bit of a bank. Yeah, yeah. I feel it needs to it needs to change. And one you can't entirely trust neither. That's the other thing as well. So it's kind of this, this waiting for the deceptive moment. That's the, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Bad rap. Yeah, I think like TV might be a bit different. You kind of get. I mean, I don't know how you recoup, like like recoup. And once you've got your fee, you got your fee. Mm. And it's like then the next one is when you can maybe ask for more. Mm. I don't know, but I feel yeah, music's like it's a bank. Probably <laughs> don't need them. Yeah. yeah, you probably don't need them. But you guys, um, you know, Hugo, you, you perpetuated that culture by being ever-present in a space that you guys felt you could capitalise on when there was no... You went independent when there was no one around to... And it, it gained momentum, you know. Yeah. If it wasn't for you guys, uh, within a comedy sense, certainly there wouldn't be this, you know, open playing field now. I yeah I I guess some of that's true. We had no like we had no financial gain. Like we had no we were like 
basically we had this idea um like you know steve steve is proactive so super mm. very proactive mm. hustlers and he was like let's just shoot it mm. and i to be honest forgot we were doing it that day <laughs> and we did it and excuse me like asim edited it and our friend ben edited it and like it, but there, it was just to show each other, really. Yeah. Like, this is the idea. This is what it could be. And then from that, you know, I, sometimes I think that when you have good intentions behind something, mm. then I, I don't know. The, the, the energy works. Uh, it works a bit, but, like, no, we're not entitled to nothing, any of us. Like, mm. you know, you can make music for, a, for however long and mm. you, you, nothing might ever happen to you. Mm. Like you're never gonna, you're not entitled to it. But mm. I think sometimes with good intention, you get good energy around it, mm. and it it might help a little bit more. Energy works. People yeah. respond. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I also just think we're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. man, blessed and blessed to have have you guys create such magic and for us to still laugh Thank you. with you now. What's Pharrell like, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to ask you the whole time. That was where I like. Yeah. Um, for for its time, he was awesome. You know, charmer. Um, yeah, I can imagine he's a charmer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, in all the best possible ways, whether it's creative or, you know, it's a man that's, you know, got his yeah, finger yeah. on what he does very yeah. very firmly. And, you know, it's just a, just a fun guy to be around. Yeah, I can imagine. You know? yeah. Yeah, 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 I met him once. Did you? But a different interaction. Yeah. I opened... There was banging at a door. There was this like 10 foot guy, like massive. I opened the door, he was standing there. And then Pharrell peered around and he was there to see somebody. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll take you. And I took them into the room and it wasn't there. And then I was like, uh, I'll, I'll go call him. I'll find out what's going on. Whatever, I found out what was going on. He'd be there in five minutes. Then on the way out, I went, nice to meet you, man. <laughs> and he went he did it back nanu nanu yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so cool. yes. I was like a little bit shaking as well yeah 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 like, well, it's I'm, hard not to the energy that he holds is crazy I'm a proper like Pharrell yeah. like stan yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah well I mean that's insane I'm not a stan but like I'm I love it. like oh yeah I was obsessed yeah. so it was like weird for me yeah 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 Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, but like, that doesn't age, does it? Whenever you meet a hero or something, yeah, you just hope for the best. But it's normally you that's melting, you know. Yeah, yeah. Tell you, I'm just like a fucking guy that answered the door. He's yeah. like very polite. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, do you, do you guys want any water or anything? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Probably had like you know, there was like a I could see the Mercedes van outside. It's probably had everything in it, like a yeah. massage chair and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was good. Yeah, he's he's. He calm. smelled great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Him. Tiny Temper and Craig David, best top three smelling men. I've top three met. selling smelling men. Yeah, there you time. go. <laughs> yeah. As compiled by Hugo. Very good. When you meet them, you'll, me, you'll, you'll know. know. You'll smell Tiny Temper. You'll be like, wow. <laughs> what is that? I didn't ask. <laughs> What's the future, brother? What's the future for Hugo Chegwin? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Honestly, I want to put some music out. Um, I feel this new underground... I don't even know if it's underground. UK producers making 140 mm. jungle, like, it's exciting. Mm. They're sick. Mm. They're like, they're holding the torch of that world right now. Mm -hmm. I think my generation, have like, well, I'd say my, I'm saying me really, I've lost touch with it. Mm -hmm. And after DJing in clubs and like seeing what they're on, it's mm. exciting. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I fully rate all these new guys, like, there's a guy called um, like Skeptic, Bullet Tooth, yeah. um, Badger. Yeah, loads of them. I just can't think right now, but they're all really sick and exciting. And Supply, you, yeah, all these guys, they're great. And you're absorbing all of that. Yeah, I just, it's just exciting. I mean, in my soul, I'm 90s crime rap, <laughs> but like I'm enjoying what they're putting out and hopefully I can like contribute my version of that. Awesome, hopefully yeah 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 and then make more shows with the guys mm. nice that's it yeah do what you love yeah man do what we do thank you my brother thank you so much for joining us yes Hugo. thank you for having yeah, me thank you no thank you for joining us man we're out arts arcade piccadilly circus street culture podcast killer keller you stay lucky people easy <laughs>